Where Darwin and Wallace parted company over natural selection is when it came to the evolution of the human mind in Homo sapiens, specifically how consciousness arose from unconscious molecules. Even though Wallace was a strong advocate for the persuasive power behind natural selection, he felt that human consciousness specifically was of such a high order of organization that natural selection was insufficient to explain it. This led Wallace to a somewhat abstruse model of the human mind and its interaction with nature at large. He did this while he still defended that natural selection was operative, even if it cannot explain the entirety of the human mind. Although Wallace resisted being labeled a dualist, his explanations provide ample evidence for it. Of course, Darwin was saddened by Wallace's views as first published in 1864. As Darwin chided Wallace, but I groan over man. You write like a metamorphosed naturalist, and you the author of the best paper that ever appeared in the Anthropological Review. I defy you to upset your own doctrine. Going to the jugular of Wallace's inconsistencies, the journal Nature critiqued his not-so-veiled dualism with a series of biting and ironic remarks. To say that our brains were made by God and our lungs by natural selection is to really exclude the creator from half his creation and natural science from half of nature. To Wallace's great credit, he responded to the nature lambast with a very succinct and telling rejoinder, which greatly clarified his increasingly controversial views. I maintain that man is descended from a lower animal form, but I adduce facts which go to prove that some other law or power than natural selection has specially modified him. If Darwin is not anti-Darwinian in admitting, as he does, the possibility that animals and plants may not have had a common ancestor, I may surely deny that I am anti-Darwinian when I show that there are certain phenomena in the case of man that cannot be wholly explained by natural selection. I think the fundamental difficulty Wallace saw and attempted to address was his inability to imagine that unconscious processes could, over time, produce conscious self-awareness. Wallace captures this when he opines that it is impossible for us to believe that the mere addition of one, two, or a thousand other material elements to form a more complex molecule could in any way tend to produce self-conscious existence. Wallace's use of impossible to believe is quite revealing here, since that was the same objection that had been given for years against his own theory about how species mutate over time due to varying environmental conditions. Darwin, of course, saw things quite differently than his friend and didn't think it was at all impossible to imagine how far-reaching natural selection could be both in the past and in the future. As Darwin pointed out, we must, however, acknowledge, as it seems to me, that man with all his noble qualities still bears in his bodily frame the indelible stamp of his lowly origin. In addition, Darwin predicted that in the distant future I see open fields for far more important researches. Psychology will be based on a new foundation, that of the necessary acquirement of each mental power and capacity by gradation. Light will be thrown on the origin of man and his history. For Wallace, another force besides natural selection was necessary to explain how a conglomeration of mere atoms could give rise to self-reflective awareness. Whereas for Darwin, Matter itself was sufficient to eventually explain the great mystery of consciousness.